If God is not number one in your life, I don't care what you think you're doing. It ain't working. You can't lose with God. If you don't have fellowship with God, if you're not reconciled with God, all this stuff won't do you no good. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Shannon. Thank you for joining us again. Today's lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33. Uh, the righteousness of God in him. Please stay tuned. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33 will be the main text for our lesson this morning. Thank you for being here this Lord's day. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33, our Lord said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the first part. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's point number one. Is the reign of God. That's point number one. Point number two, it says, and his righteousness. Point number two. That's the righteousness of God. Point number three, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's the resources of God. I want you to get it now. Here's the proper order. The reign of God. Number two, the righteousness of God. Number three, the resources of God. Now, over here is out of order. This is out of order, but this is the way we think. Right. We want stuff for ourselves. That's up. That's up. We want salvation when we think we're going to die, and then we'll finally call on the Lord. Yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and see, most people miss it right here. This is where they miss it. And you may be in the audience, and I'm really focused on the young people. I'm talking about the young people, especially those who just finished high school, going to college, and those who are in college, those who just got married or whatever. If you start out like this, let me tell you, you're already messing up. You are not going to make it. Not going to make it to heaven. And you think that you, well, I'm, I'm going to take care of self first. I worry about salvation and God later on. You got it backwards. That's a combination. This is the right combination for disaster. If you don't believe me, look around in churches of Christ and look at the people who followed this. See where they are now. They ain't really got no. I'm preaching now. Now, we're going to look at Solomon, but don't have time to go through all of this. I wish it did. But Solomon, let, let me look at the reign of God. First of all, look, look what we have here. Uh, superiority. That's the first thing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the reign. The reign of God. If God is not number one in your life, I don't care what you think you're doing. It ain't working. Right. You say, well, I got all this stuff. He'll let you get all this stuff and never be able to use none of it. Right. Well, let's go a little further. Look here. God's eternal preeminence. He should be number one. Look at here. Omnipresent, all present. Uh, Deuteronomy 4, 39. 
Jeremiah 23, 24, he's everywhere, omnipresent. Omniscient, all precept, all knowing. John, 1 John 3, 20, Psalm 147, verse 5. Omniscient, knows all things. Uh, omnipotent, that means he's all powerful. Yes, Job 42, 1 and 2, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, 11, 12 to 25. Now watch this now. Go home and read this. Let me, let me just really take it easy. You want to know how to pray? Wait a minute. Me, you want to really know how to pray? Read 1 Chronicles. Chapter 29, 11, 12 through 25. Go ahead and read that. You'll see something. Ladies, you want to know how to pray? Go and read that. All right. Pretty good? Now, let, let's, look at, let's look at something here. King Solomon, his wealth and his wisdom, the queen of Sheba came from the far to see and hear the wisdom of Solomon. And you know what? When she got back, she said, uh, the half has not been told. Yes, sir. And Jesus speaks about Solomon. He says uh, the queen of Sheba came from the far to hear and see the wisdom of Solomon, yes, but you won't come across the street to listen to me. Right, <laughs> now, and Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. Right, All right, now, look what Solomon have here. Look at this. We have Solomon's dream. He had a dream. God spoke to him. And a young man, what is his name, brother? Uh, Taurus uh, uh, Irvin did an excellent job in reading scripture there. Appreciate that. Now, he had a dream. God appeared to him in a dream. Look, look at this now. Uh, Solomon's dream, and in his dream, God asked him something. He said, what do you desire? God was delighted in Solomon's desire. He didn't want riches. He didn't want long life. He didn't want to see the enemy death. He said, Lord, I just want to know how to go in and out of that people. That's what he wanted. And it pleased God. Then we look at Solomon's what? Dividends. You know what dividend is? Yes, you know when you put money in the bank or in something, you get dividend. 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 Amen. Watch this here. You can't lose with God. Don't put the dividend in yourself because it ain't going to work. And some, I'm talking to somebody. There won't be more believe that in the man in the room. You got to try it for yourself. I don't believe, Brother Santa. Okay, go ahead. And he'll let you get right to the end. You retire and everything. You got all in place. You won't get in and be able to enjoy none of it. I want to enjoy some of the fruits of my labor while I'm living and in good health. Amen, somebody. Amen. Got it? Young people, you need to listen. Young married couples, you need to listen. Stop. You, you want to put self first and stuff. You may think about salvation, but you've got God last. That is all messed up. We got some people here at this church been doing that for 40 years. And they're they trying to figure out why, what, what's happening to them. What's wrong with me? Why is I can't get ahead? There it is. You got the wrong combination. Preach, Brother Shannon. Now, you see, and Solomon, he, if you read these scriptures here about Solomon here in Chronicles, uh, and the, 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 money, the gold that the queen of Sheba brought him, he had so much gold, it has been said if you get 65 dump trucks, 65 of them full of gold, that's what he had. Wow, I don't think, uh, Wesley, I don't think you got a pickup truck of gold, dude. <laughs> I don't think, uh, Keith, you got a handful of gold. Well, now, can you imagine 65 pickup trucks of gold? Well, where did he get it from? God gave it to him. Yeah. What? Boy, I don't hear. I, I, I wanted to bring uh, this little boy up here, this sister here. I don't have one. Oh, there's one right here. 
I didn't forget my, my candy bowl. And uh, that his name is uh, Reno Jr. I was going to let him stick his hand in, in the candy bowl and get a handful of candy. And if he was smart, he said, well, I'll tell you what you do, Brother Shannon. You reach in there and get it because your hand's bigger than mine. <laughs> See, you're trying to get rich. Let God do it. Right, He'll give you more you can handle. Right. Yep. Are you listening? Some of you not listening. You ought to be listening. Because you think because you're going to school, you're going to college, you got a good education, you got a good job, and all, you think it's you. Deuteronomy 8, 18, don't you think that? It's God. All right, that, that's enough along those lines there. Now, here's number two. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and if you notice, there's an and there, and if you notice, there's an and there. What does that mean? All of it's connected. You can't have one without the other. Man. Now watch this here. Look here. The Savior and the Scripture. God's eternal precept and purpose. Plan for pardon, Revelation uh, 14, 6, reconciliation through the, by the blood, by the book, and by the body. What do you mean reconcile? If you don't have fellowship with God, if you're not reconciled with God, all this stuff won't do you no good. All this stuff that Solomon, hey, if he don't have a relationship with God, it don't mean nothing. All this stuff, wait a minute. You need to listen. You can have all this stuff, and you don't have the right relationship with God. You're going to leave it here. This is yours. I am black and short. Right. And I don't think at my age, none of it's going to change. Matter of fact, I may get a little darker in this sun, Amen. but I can guess what? I can hang around Brother Petty and Wesley, and who else tall here? Mark, I can hang around y'all the rest of my life. I ain't going to get taller. Now, I may get wider, but I'm not going to get taller. Are you listening to me? Now, this is the, listen, you got to depend on God for salvation, but you depend on God for stuff. Man. Now watch this, man. I got to spend a little time here. The righteousness of God is in Christ. See, y'all get this in there. I've got to work on something here this morning, and I got to change the way I was going to preach this lesson, and I got to cut it short. They gave me 45 minutes, and I, some of them said, no, that's too long. That's what Rico say, but he ain't running nothing but his mouth. <laughs> said, this is the first Sunday. Now watch this now. Let me show you something about the righteousness of God in him. To have a relationship with God, to have fellowship with God, Christ Jesus had to come to this earth, take on human flesh. He lived a perfect life, sinless life. He died a vicarious death. What do you mean by he died in our stead? He, the innocent died for the guilty. Every man that ever born and committed one sin, Christ died for him. You listen to that? Now, the righteousness of God. What do you mean righteousness of God? Well, we know God himself is righteous. But how God makes man righteous is through the system that Christ brings, and that's the gospel system. Amen. You with me? Wait a minute. Don't go to sleep on me. They with me. I'm going to say some things now may disturb some of you, but it's not my intent to disturb, but to help. The righteousness of God, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, is in him. Now, the kingdom of Christ, Ephesians 5, 5, Colossians 1, 13 and 14, who have delivered us from the power of darkness has translated us into the kingdom of his son in whom we have redemption through his blood. Now, watch, watch this now. See all this old here money? If you think this is the greatest thing in this life, you missed it. Right. And we live in a materialistic society yes, and everybody's trying to get money, 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 more and more and more. They'll forsake the assembly. They'll do, tell all kinds of lies. Why they can't come to services? They'll just lie, lie, tell me a lie. Right. They'll lie in a minute. Why they can't do this and why does you lie? You're lying to yourself. Man. Come on, I just couldn't come because I feel bad. But when you feel bad, they take you to the doctor. How did you get there? Did you fly? 
How long you got to sit there? You No, you don't want to worship God. You don't want to have him first in your life. Amen. Amen. I'm preaching now. Now, watch this now. To have righteousness of God, to be saved. Look at this. I want you to really listen to this. Boy, I don't know where that time went on. Well, I mean, 15 minutes. I think it's 15 minutes. You got to hear something. What do you hear? You got to hear and believe this. That Jesus Christ came, put on flesh, lived a perfect life, didn't do no sins. He died on Calvary's cross, and God was pleased with that. He was buried. He rose again the third day. You must believe that. You got to believe that. Now watch this. You hear step number one. You got your finger? Step number one, you hear. Step number two, you believe it. Do you believe that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe it. Step number three is repentance. Huh? What did it say? One, two, three, repentance. See, repentance requires something. But I want you to listen. It's time out for members of the Church of Christ telling young people, you need to go on up there and be baptized. Amen. What are you doing? See, you gave the idea that all my problems are going to be over when I be baptized. I see it everywhere. I'm not quick to baptize anybody anymore because we got too many folks at James Road who were baptized who wasn't converted to Christ. Amen. And all they're doing is coming and they're not converted to Christ. Amen. They're half converted. The first thing you need to do is change your mind. Right. What? A lot of times we bring somebody here, well, you're going down and be baptized. And knowing they don't believe in Jesus. And knowing they hadn't repented. But you'll tell them to go be baptized. Uh -uh. Sometimes unfaithful members will bring folks here, say you and I and be baptized. You don't see them no more in six months. Right. What is going on here? Unfaithful members, if you don't know how to teach people, stop telling them that they need to be Amen. baptized. First thing they need to do is accept Lord Jesus Christ for what he is and what he's done. So that requires teaching about his blood because his blood is for the midst of sin. And you got to be taught that I've got to give total loyalty to God. You not converted to baptism, you got to be converted to Christ. And when you come to converted to Christ, nobody have to beg you to come to service. Now you young girls that never obeyed the gospel. You need to know this. I've got one granddaughter that obeyed the gospel and I told her, I said, listen, don't you talk about being baptized because your dad is a preacher. That ain't going to help you, girl. If you're not converted to the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to take a bath or drink your water. Amen. You don't need to be baptized. Because we got too many people right here yes, that's been baptized, ain't converted at all. Amen. Right, They're not converted to no Christ. How do you know? You got to beg them. To, who ever heard of somebody begging people to come to Christ who converted to Christ? Somebody beg you to give? No, Amen. You got to change your mind. You're getting ready to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and everything, all I have, belong to God. I called members of the Church of Christ that they were so-called baptized. Well, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't forgot you. See, that kind of stuff. But you won't do that if you work at FedEx. I ain't, well, I ain't forgot you. I know I got a job then. No, uh, look here. You don't have no job no more. That's what they're going to do. You may think you got a job. I'm helping somebody now. Are you ready to repent? Well, what do you mean repent? Are you ready to turn away from sin? It has to do with the changing of your ways after you change your mind. Wait a minute. You young people, listen to me. I'm not talking about you all that have been baptized. I'm, if you don't believe me, you young people, look at the people that's been baptized at your age and see how they attend service. See if they come to Bible class. 
See if they read the Bible. See if they participate. See if they give. They ain't converted. Now, see, I'm preaching like this. It's just like it's a gospel meeting. Somebody says, brother, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I remember my conversion, January 22nd, 1978. That's when I was converted to Christ. I have missed one service. Not one. Are you bragging? No, that's bragging. That's facts. Because Brother Chase came to me and said, Brother uh, Shannon, Shannon, aren't you about ready to get wet? I said, no, I haven't totally repented. I got to make up my mind. I got to leave the Catholic Church alone, and I got to stop chewing tobacco, and I got to stop drinking whiskey. Amen. Amen. What? Curse it. Listen, you can't say no curse word. I don't know. I invented them. <laughs> I ran with the devil's children that know all the cuss words. Well, what's the conversion? It requires you to change your mind, change your ways. You ready to change your ways? If you're not ready to change your ways, you're not ready for no baptism. Amen. Now, I don't care what somebody told you. It's going to be baptized. Ah! Repentance comes before baptism. Amen. You got to change your mind. Well, let me give you an example. If you're dancing, and say you go to school and you're on the dancing, and you're a major at going around half naked, you don't need no baptism. You need to change your mind. Get out of that junk. Amen. If you're in a church that's not in the scripture, you need to change your mind. Come out of it. Right. You ain't ready for no baptism. Amen. You think you're going to be baptized, I'm going to baptize in Christ, and still walk around with your dress up like this? Oh, come on, man. Amen. We got too much of that foolishness in the churches of Christ yes, all over America. Amen. They had repented. Walking around with your clothes in tight on. Yes, sir. Showing everything. You talking about you've been baptized. What? Yes, you can be baptized in a water where every, you know every bullfrog in the pond. It ain't going to help you at all. Amen. You got to be first converted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. You got to change your mind. Amen. Stop looking at your family, folks, because Amen. they hadn't changed their mind. Right. They ain't made no changes. They still acting the same way that you did before they were baptized. Right. Ain't no changes. Amen. Ain't no changes in them. No. Good. There's some of them in here. Some of them here will cuss you in a heartbeat. Yep. They ain't made no changes. Amen. The devil still got their tongue. Yes, right. Got members of the church of Christ who steal from the Lord. Still come right in here and steal. Yep. And think they're getting by. He ain't getting by nothing. Amen. You ain't converted. Yep, you living with a man or shacking up with a man or sleep with a man like you're married and you remember the church of Christ. You ain't converted. Amen. You're going to die and go to hell. Yes, sir. Because you ain't repentant. Well, I go to church every time. Going to church don't make you repent. Amen. You ready to change? You, are you ready? You say you're ready for baptism. Are you ready to make all the services? Are you ready to start reading the Bible and let the Bible, listen to me, control and guide you in life? Are you ready for that? We got a, a fine education program we're trying to build it back up. On Sunday morning, we're teaching some of the good basic lessons, Amen. and half the members are not even here. Amen. Right, and they said they're members of the Church of Christ, and they're on their way to heaven. Well, you're going to be lost because you don't even know what the Bible's all about. You don't even know the books of the Bible. How many of you know the books of the Bible? How many of the Church of Christ and James Road know the books of the Bible? Can you get up and quote them right now? If a man came in with a submachine gun and said, if you don't know the books from the Bible, I'm going to shoot you. Would you live or would you die? But you see, you can't say that Brother Rico, Brother Pettit, Brother Joe, they doing a good job and put jit in this stuff every Sunday morning. And you don't even know the books of the Bible. Can you imagine going to school for 12 years and don't know your ABCs? I'm preaching now. Why? Because I'm, I'm right where you live in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come here, you can't preach this long. When, when, you can't <laughs> preach this long here when you do preaching like this. You got to cut it short. <laughs> <laughs> Repentance, it is. Amen. 
Peter told those folk after they heard about Jesus, repent. Yes, sir. Are you ready to repent? What do you mean? Change your ways. Right. You can't keep on smoking. You can't keep on running with that trash in the street. Amen. You can't be, keep on running around acting like somebody ain't got good sense. You're getting ready to come to Christ, and when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, there's some stuff you got to give up. Right. Got to give it up. Some folks you run with, you're going to stop running with them. Amen. Can't run with them. Some folks you talk to on telephone, you, gonna t you can't talk to them no more. Because right. they ain't going to give you nothing right. They're going to tell you everything wrong. Yes, right. You ready to give it up? Good, you want to be friends with your friends and they're following Satan and you're going to follow Christ? You can't keep following that. Man, Wait a minute, I'm preaching that. Yes, I see our young people. They stay on their iPhone and they look at the field and the junk that's on the iPhone and Facebook and all that Twitter and all that stuff and you coming to Christ, you got to leave that alone. Right. Well, son, I got it. You can go for it. Okay, you got it. When you confess with your mouth your faith in Jesus, what's the confess? You don't confess the sin. Right. You say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's what you're saying. Now, you know what you're saying? You're not going to make the confession just one time. The way you live, you're going to say, I believe and respect that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Your whole life is changed. When you come up out of that water, you are saying to the world, I belong to Christ. Let me, let me do this here. Joe, here's enough. You know, when death takes place at a house, say a husband and wife is at home, and the husband die, there's a missing chair in that house. Somebody say amen. amen. When one obeys the gospel, he dies to the world. His seat that he used to sit in in Satan's kingdom, he don't sit there no more. Amen. There's a missing chair. Yes. Now, you can't go and sit, I'm in the kingdom of Christ, and Monday morning you back over there in your chair with the devil. Oh, no, you ain't made no change. Oh, they got it. Boy. Willie, you got it? Confess Christ. Now, now, now we can talk about baptism. What'd you say? Now we can talk about baptism. What? We, we can talk about baptism. Since you got the good understanding about baptism now. See, you thought that you could be baptized, repent later, keep on doing what you're doing. No, you got it wrong. It ain't going to work. You see Rico's head. <laughs> I love Rico. Amen. Rico, my Rico had come a long way. Amen. And his family. Good? Amen. Now, you ready for baptism. Now, watch this now. And look, look, look at this. God is saying that if you recognize me as who I am and honor me, obey my son, listen, uh, you have salvation. And the stuff over here, don't even worry about it. Right. Wait, wait a minute. I, I'd like to use this illustration. Nobody here that old. Trying to look around. I don't see such a child here. I'm trying to look around. When I was a kid coming up, well, I know. I know somebody know. To the north. Used to go to the country store, kind of, and you say, I need a pound of bologna. It probably cost about a dime or 15 cents a pound. You know what they tell you? Once you buy that, they say just reach your hand in the, in the cracker barrel and get all the crackers for free. Right? You do all this right here, these are the crackers over here. That, that's free. No, don't even worry about this. You got the meat. Here's the meat right here. You want the crackers? You ain't got to worry about it. I'll give you the crackers. That's what God's saying. God is saying if you respect me and the system I set up for salvation, Here's a cracker. But what we want to do is, I want the cracker first. I'm going to work hard for it. Listen here. Solomon, once he did what he did, all that other stuff was crackers. All that gold he had, he had to work for that stuff. Well, son, I'm finished. Yep, I'm finished. Wait, wait a minute. Now, 
Wait a minute. Knowing that, it may be somebody here that wants to be baptized into Christ for the mission of sin. Now, when you're baptized into Christ, watch this now. You won't be joining the church. You won't be getting religion. You'll be obeying the Lord, and the Lord is going to add you to the church of Christ in a universal sense. Your sins are washed away. You become a new creature in Christ. Now, what you have to do is take your Bible and start coming to Bible class and studying the Bible for yourself. Say, Lord, I want to do better. Say, Lord, would you help me to make it? God will help you to make it. He'll do it today. It may be one or two in this audience. Sometime I preach like this, a whole bunch of people come down to obey to God. It may be one here on this side, this side. Like, you know what? I need to be baptized into Christ for the mission of sin. This is the start. This is the first thing. This is the second. Don't worry about this. You're going to get all this. Michael, you got us up. Help me stand and sit. Thank you again for watching. I hope you've been enriched by God's word. Take care of yourself and each other.